What is going on everybody? What is going on the catch? Bam, my name is John Dawson and in today's video we are hopping into another 2022 fantasy football mock draft. Today's video we are running an 18 PPR style mock draft from the fifth overall selection. This one requested by our boy Grant. Of course, if you guys have any mock draft requests, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below as well as hit that like button on the way in and hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel we put out free daily fantasy football content and at the moment we are running a free subscriber mock draft through sleeper nearly every single night at the channel so if you guys have any mock drafts you would like me to set up whether it is a pre-recorded video or a subscriber mock draft during a live stream please let me know i will get it worked into the schedule without further ado let's hop into another mock draft so at 1.5 you've got an interesting selection overall because they're kind of right in the middle i mean i guess four would be right in the middle but you're still pretty much right in the middle so you're going to see some pretty good value go in the first round and in the second round even the third round right as you're just kind of sitting right there smack dab in the middle but i think you can land a lot of good value from that position as well so my personal strategy in an eight team league is to always go after high positional value and just remember in an eight team league the two positions you're going to have the most depth that overall in my opinion are going to be the wide receiver position and the quarterback position but that doesn't necessarily mean you should ignore positional value at either position so we'll kind of see what happens here my gut instinct would be to go with a running back in the first round and a player that i would keep a high eye on in espn's overall rankings and an 18 draft is travis kelsey i mean we might be able to land him in the third round because he is relatively far back on overall ranking. So like I said, my gut is telling me go running back here, but I think we can land a pretty solid running back overall with the 12th overall pick. Like I said, positional value is everything. You're gonna going to be going up against absolutely stacked teams on a regular basis in an 18 league. So I love Jamar Chase here and I love Justin Jefferson. We'll go JJ by a hair here and we'll take him as our first overall selection. Moving forward, looking ahead to the second round with the 12th overall selection. We do want to go ahead and secure running back. Like I said, Titan's gonna be huge, man. And in your personal leagues, you probably won't see Kelsey fall back too far. Going by ESPN's rankings, they do have Mark Andrews at Titan one, which I don't have a huge problem with. I like Kelsey a hair more, but I mean, they've got Kelsey ranked at 30 overall. We've got the 21st overall selection. I think we should just go ahead and target Kelsey at 21 overall. And the reason being is because in your personal leagues, you guys will not see Kelsey fall back that far. I don't care if it's a 16 league or an 18 league or 20 team league. You're not going to find Kelsey at the 30th overall selection, regardless of what ESPN's rankings are. So I like targeting Kelsey, getting that positional advantage at the 21st overall selection. And we need to go running back at 12 overall. I like Najee Harris gets a little bit of a stinger in today's practice at the time that I'm recording this, but I think he'll be just fine. But as he just got selected there, he's not going to be available for us. So we see Derrick Henry gone, Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel, Najee Harris, and Dalvin Cook. So I'll go with Joe Mixon all day long. You guys know that I've been a huge advocate for Mixon and fantasy going into the 2022 season. A revamped offensive line, an extremely explosive offense. I think they're going to be one of the best offenses in the league. So I'll take Joe Mixon as my RB1 all day long. So like I said, Going into the third round, things moving relatively quickly here. We got Tyreek Hill gone, Alvin Kamara gone, Williams gone, and Connor gone. So looking at running back, Aaron Jones is tempting here. Looking at receiver, Keenan Allen or Mike Evans is really tempting as well. But let's go ahead and let's take that positional value. Let's lock up Travis Kelsey as our tight end one. We're not going to have to worry about the position for quite some time. And moving in to the end of the third, we already see that second tight end gone in Mark Andrews. So I'm really happy with that Kelsey selection. Grants us some positional value. When we look across our team so far, Mixon, JJ, Kelsey is a really solid start, in my humble opinion, in an eight-team league. All right, on the clock here in the fourth round, we got Saquon gone, Keenan Allen gone, and T. Higgins gone. So I would look at running back here. I like Monty. I like Chubb. Chubb is really far back in ESPN's rankings. If you guys are drafting through ESPN, take a note of that. But I'm going to hold off at running back. I'm going to go receiver here. I'm going to land Mike Evans, get a really solid wide receiver too behind JJ. That offers us just really good value at the receiver position. The fourth round is going to wrap up here with Kyle Pitts, DJ Moore, David Montgomery. And then we've got one more selection before we enter the fifth. So 
to my understanding, we have not seen a single quarterback gone. And man, listen, we talk about positional value in 18 drafts all the time, but I just don't know that you need to go out and reach for a guy like Josh Allen or Patty Mahomes, right? Or even Justin Herbert. But there does come a point for me where I'm not going to pass up Justin Herbert, I think he is going to be potentially your quarterback one this year. If it's not Josh Allen, it's Justin Herbert. If Herbert's not number one, I think he's number two. So I really do like Herbert. There's a point where I'm not going to pass him up, but just look at the depth you're going to be able to get in an 18 draft at the quarterback position. There's no reason why you can't land a Jalen Hurts or a Joe Burrow much later on. So we'll see what happens. We want to keep an eye. Let's keep an eye on Herbert, Hurts, and Burrow. I like them at their ADPs where we can go out and get them. So Looking ahead here, moving on, we are on the clock with the fifth overall selection. Nick Chubb gone, Jalen Waddle gone, J.K. Dobbins gone, and Michael Pittman gone in this current round of round five. So I would like to go running back here. There are a lot of players that I like hanging around at all positions. I like Brees Hall, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to go Zeke here. Now, I know not everyone is a big believer in Zeke, but just at that value, I mean, really, when you look at what he did last season, he didn't have a bad season whatsoever. So I'll take him behind Mixon, right? I think those are two solid running backs to lead this squad. Our advantage so far is at the receiver position and at the tight end position. But if we can pick up enough potential consistency at running back throughout this draft, I think we'll be completely fine. So Brees Hall gone, Terry McLaurin gone, Josh Jacob's gone. That should end round five. Moving into round six, we go. We still haven't seen a quarterback gone. I think Josh Allen will be gone by the seventh round. This might be a draft where I actually go out and try and get Justin Herbert. So things moving quickly here. We are back on the clock. Mike Williams, Josh Allen, and Patty Mahomes gone. So now I don't know if we're necessarily going to land Herbert. But let's take a look at running back overall. Antonio Gibson, Eli Mitchell. Mm, I just don't know. Let's go ETN here. I really do like ETN's value there. I think that's a good selection. Then I think I want to go receiver in the seventh round. We'll just go ahead and try and stack up at each position as Justin Herbert is off of the board. That's going to allow us to take a little bit of a breather at the quarterback position. I think if we can still land Hurts or Hurts and Burrow, even I, I think we're going to end up with a really good roster overall here. So going into the seventh, George Kittle gone, Brandon Cooks gone, Hollywood Brown gone. At this point in the draft for me, I want to keep an eye on the quarterback position. I want to try and land a player. Oh, there goes Jalen Hurts. So now Burrow becomes really, really valuable for us overall. But I want to essentially switch between the receiver and running back position and let the right quarterback fall to us. So I'm going to go DK Metcalf here. He's the highest rated receiver on my personal rankings and the highest rated receiver available. Then I'm going to revert back to the running back position in this next round. I really like AJ Dillon here going off my personal rankings, but if you look at ESPN rankings, we probably don't need to go ahead and draft AJ Dillon just yet, but do take a note in your personal drafts. He might go a little bit earlier. So let's take a look here. I might just go out and get a quarterback. Yeah, let's go out. Let's go for a little bit more upside. Let's go Kyler Murray at quarterback and keep an eye on Burrow. We might end up with a second quarterback. We'll see. All right, so let's see. We're all the way in round eight now. We switch off of the running back position because I think we can take a breather and still land A.J. Dillon and get one or two rookies that I really like later in this draft. Sitting with Mixon, Elliott, and ETN at running back, looking at receiver. We've got J.J. Mike Evans and Metcalf is a filthy start, in my opinion. Kelsey at tight end, Murray at quarterback. I really like this start to this team overall. So really, I mean, receiver is going to be very, very deep throughout the entire draft, especially if you play in full PPR. So we'll keep an eye on the receiver room, but really when I'm looking at the board right now, I think it's absolutely loaded. Let's take a look at running back. I think we can wait one more round before we snag up my guy, AJ Dillon. So let's take a look at receiver. There's plenty of guys I like here. We could go with another tight end, but you just don't really need to. Let's go with the second quarterback. Let's lock up Joe Burrow. We have nothing to worry about at the quarterback position. I don't always go to quarterbacks, especially in 18 leagues, but hey, that locks up some trade value for us. I think it also gives us that upside in Kyler Murray and maybe a little bit more consistency and Joe Burrow. And hey, trade value never hurts down the road. So at this point, without a doubt, with Kelsey as our tight end one to finish out this draft, we are switching between the running back and receiver position. We're just taking our highest rated running back and our highest rated receiver. We're ending out the draft that way. We're filling out the bench that way. You could consider in the mix, especially because I like the start to this team at the running back and receiver position. We could consider another tight end just for Kelsey's bye week, but I don't know if it's completely necessary overall. All right, I am going to go in and draft AJ Dillon here against his 
uh, ADP on ESPN because I had that much conviction in AJ Dillon that I don't really care. And he is going very, very early overall in our current subscriber mock draft. So I don't even know if he would be available at 76 overall, maybe in an 18 league, but there's definitely a possibility that when I initially wanted to draft AJ Dillon, that that's kind of the area where you would see him gone. So moving on to the 11th round, I'm gonna go back to the receiver position and let's just take a look at tight end. Hawkinson, Ertz, Knox, Henry, Gusecki. Let's get those guys queued up. If they fall to us at the right price, we can pick one of them, Hawkinson's already off of the board so looking at receiver here right talk about positional value right i do like christian kirk i like elijah Moore here but i also like hopkins i would say any of those three guys i really really like we've got you know looking at our receiver room we don't really have a lot of youth so let's go elijah Moore here things are looking very good in training camp for him but the guy i do want to take a note of is deandre hopkins right yes he's going to miss some time due to that suspension, but we do have Kyler Murray on this team. I get it, this isn't an underdog format or anything, but you just think about that potential stack and when he comes back, the value that he could bring to this team in terms of positional advantage overall. I mean, he is gone off the board here, but uh, that could have been a really interesting selection as well. All right, so let's take a look at running back. I mean, we could go Pollard here. We could lock up the handcuff to Zeke. I don't think that would be a bad move, or we could diversify go Rashad Penny, who I think will be the guy as long as he's healthy. We're going to see Walker at some point, but I, I think to start out the season, I really like Penny. Uh, Melvin Gordon and James Cook are the other two guys that I like here, but let's go ahead. Let's get the handcuff to Zeke. Let's get both of those running backs. Why not? And looking at the start to this team, man, Kyler Murray and Joe Burrow, quarterback, Kelsey at tight end, Mixon, Zeke, ETN, AJ Dillon, and Pollard at running back. Looking at receivers, JJ, Mike Evans, Metcalf, and Elijah Moore. I really like the start to this team overall. So I think running back we might be good on, but overall we could really finish this out in any combination we want. Another receiver and another running back, another receiver and another tight end would probably be the combination I go with. But regardless, I think I'm gonna be happy with this team as a whole. So let's just take a look at who's available. I think we're gonna go receiver here. I think Tyler Boyd is my favorite receiver available, especially since we've got Joe Burrow on this team. Get a little bit of stack value, why not? Let's go Tyler Boyd. As long as it's full PPR, I really do like Tyler Boyd. But on top of that, God forbid anything happens to Higgins or Jamar Chase during the season, even if it's just one or two games and you essentially have the handcuff to Higgins or Chase and a receiver on one of the best offenses in the entire league. So really to end this thing out, man, there's a couple routes you could go. You could go with another running back, Rashad Penny, James Cook, or Melvin Gordon would be the guys for me, or we could go with another tight end, whether it's Dawson Knox or Hunter Henry, even Pat Fearmuth. Those would probably be my next top rated guys. Then maybe you could consider a Cole Komet or a Noah Fant. If you wanted another receiver, probably be Iuke, Russell Gage for me, just because they present some nice upside or really even any of these rookie receivers you see available or Robert Woods maybe for some nice veteran consistency but let's go running back to end things out like I said Penny Cook Gordon I like all of them let's go Penny let's finish out this draft I think we absolutely killed this draft overall we'll go ahead and we will draft a defense and a kicker to finish things out so if you guys do draft an 18 league make sure you let me know in the comments down below what you think of this squad overall and kind of the approach we took throughout this draft we got kyler murray and joe burrow at quarterback so good depth there a little bit of upside in murray a little bit more consistency in joe burrow maybe overall kelsey at tight end at the end of the day the reason why i didn't go with the second tight end is because kelsey has you know a strong history of being healthy and i mean he's he's gonna have a monster year no matter what so i think we already had that huge positional advantage we'll go and we'll draft the colts defense and then we'll end things out with the kicker. So, you know, at the end of the day, could draft a second tight end to finish this draft just to get, you know, coverage for the bye week. But I think in an 18 league, if you have Kelsey, you spend high draft capital on him, you don't necessarily need to spend any more capital within the draft on another tight end because, you know, when week eight rolls around, you're going to be able to find a flyer to plug in on your team at the end of the day. All right, so lots of good kickers here, but let's just go with Matt Gay. Had a phenomenal year last year to finish out this roster. Looking at running back Mixon, Elliott, ETN, AJ Dillon, Tony Pollard, Rashad Penny. Hey, I mean, all things considered, I really like this running back room. I think 
overall, it's probably the weakest part of this team. Uh, and listen, I get people have some concerns about Elliott, but I think he was a good value where we got him. And overall, Nixon, Elliott, ETN, Dylan, Pollard, Penny, I really like the bench. I really like ETN as a potential flex. So I think the running back room is actually just fine. But overall, it probably presents the least amount of upside. Looking at some of the potential positional value we have throughout the rest of this team. Receiver, I think, turned out really good. I mean, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, and Metcalf. I absolutely love that start. Like I said, I want to go for some youth a little bit later on. So we got Elijah Moore. And then I think Boyd, where we got him, was a good value and a good player to draft at the end of the day. A little bit better in full PPR, of course. And like I said, potential handcuff for that Bengals receiving room as well. So we're a little bit thin at receiver with just five. But honestly, JJ Evans and Metcalf are going to play in our starting positions for the bulk of the year, then I think Moore and Boyd are two really good bench players and potential flexes to have. Colts defense to finish things out with Matt Gay. I mean, I think we got a great defense and a great kicker. Really, at the end of the draft, just draft the best available defense and the best kicker. Don't do anything crazy. And even in the 18 league and go for an early defense or kicker, you're going to be able to land a lot of value at the end of the draft regardless. So at the end of the day, there's your final roster, man. Justin Jefferson, Joe Mixon, Travis Kelsey, Mike Evans, Ezekiel Elliott, ETN, Metcalf, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, AJ Dillon, Elijah Moore, Tony Pollard, Tyler Boyd, Rashad Penny, Colts defense, and Matt Gay. I think we absolutely killed this draft. I think this was a great draft overall. So that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much, Grant, for today's recommendation. I hope this helps you out in your upcoming draft. Of course, if you guys have any mock draft requests, whether it is a pre-recorded mock draft or a live subscriber mock draft that you guys would like me to set up, Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and join our Discord to get our mock draft invites for those nightly free subscriber mock drafts as well as any updates on when we are conducting mock drafts. Be sure to hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed today's video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We put out free daily fantasy football content and we would love to have you as a member of the Catch Fam. Check out all the links down below. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on the catch.